great evening, everyone. This is Dr. AJ, the wifepreneur. And I am going to help you change the way you think, look, and feel about your marriage and sex. I like to call it marriage where marriage and ecstasy collide. There are over 500,000 people, or 500,000 couples, rather, that are in sexless marriages. Yes, they haven't had sex for at least a year. So we have a half a million people just in the United States that are sexually frustrated, sexually neglected, mad, angry, and hateful because they're not getting any sex. So I'm here to help you. So many times women, we're supposed to suppress the sexual desire to have one have sex with our husbands because of past um, ideologies from our elders that we should desire to be sexual with our husband, it should only come into play not for desire or for satisfaction standpoint, 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 excuse me, but it comes into play when we want to have children. And that is false. We are sexual creatures. God has created us to be able to be one with, with our significant other, our spouse, in order to have that ultimate sexual experience. So we can always be connected physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And so I want to tackle sex. I have some tips that will help you change the way you think about sex inside your marriage and help your sex to become healthy and happy again. And so I want us to have a conversation. I want us to be a con- have a conversation. So I encourage you to leave your positive feedback. Always be respectful. And so we're going to talk about some things. This is for men tonight. This is this video is for men. Men, you wondering about? Oh, I don't know what to do to 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 get it uh, to get it back the way it was. To get her wanting to desire me like she did before we got married. Well, I'm about to give you some tips to let you know how you can do it. So these are five tricks to get her thinking some sexual thoughts about you. To get her thinking about really wanting you. Can't wait for you to get home. And so the first thing is you want to... The first thing is that you want to do, I lost my spot because I write this stuff down. The first thing you want to do is you want to turn up the heat. Now, how do you do that? You don't want to catch us off guard. We don't want to, you know, because we're like, oh, you want to jump our bones and we're not ready. You got to heat us up. So how you heat us up? To get us thinking about sex, it really starts like the whole day. Like the, when you get up in the morning <laughs> for us. For us women, most of the time, majority of the time. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you can get it spontaneously and quickie. But majority of the time, it takes a lot to heat us up. So you got to start in the morning. So that means, you know, you're flirting with us. You've been, you know, doing saying something, you're doing something romantic. You saying something a little nice, nasty, sexual to get us thinking about wanting to have sex with you. You send us a text during the day saying, oh, baby, I love you. I'm just thinking about you. I hope you're having a good day. And you Or you fix a nice romantic dinner. Or if you get home before we get home, you know, you have a nice bath. So that gets us in a mood to want to be sexual with you. The second the second tip is um, the comfort phase. So you want us to be a little freakier in the bedroom, right? But we have to have the right energy. So what you're going to need to do is you have to You have to 
make us comfortable. And that goes along with, you know, romantic gestures and flirting and stuff. Then you want to, you know, say some nice, nasty stuff. So you want you want to quote somebody else about, you know, maybe some nice song. For example, the king of nice, nasty songs is R. Kelly. Or, if you want to go a little older, that's a little nice and nasty in the 70s, hey, go back to Teddy Pendergrass. And maybe you don't need to say nothing. Maybe you just... Turn you just turn that turn turn that music on just turn off the lights and light a candle and so that <laughs> that says a lot that's gonna say a lot so if you quote an entertainer or a musician that has you know not song not nasty song that's like too raunchy but you know some of them older songs where they you know talk about sex but it's not like so in your face it's it, it kind of like it brings it up on you slowly does that make sense and you want to use what you have use use the environment around you so maybe you know you can go out to dinner and You play a little game. So say, you know, you have blindfolds. I have a blindfold. And you say, you know, honey, I want things to be a little different tonight. So I'm going to put a blindfold on. And, and you know, you don't. You start this way before you get to that sexual moment. So you, you say, hey, let's go out on a date. I want to take you out to dinner. Um, but I want it to be a total surprise. That will get her right driven. She's going to be uh, just, you're going to get her juices flowing. And so you get a blindfold and you blindfold her. And that means that she has to listen to your voice. She has to, you have to lead her. And so by leading her, that's going to turn her on. And that may even cause her to be aggressive later on that night because she's such she's so in, in anticipating um the night ending well and so that's something that you can do in order for her to you know get to you know think a little freaky and then you know if she if, if you are you guys start floating uh, flirting with each other, you know, start doing stuff like um, role play. So role play with your spouse. That you know that helps you know getting there or you know say certain stuff that you like or if y'all watching the TV show porn together and sh and he says. Um, for example, most men, I'm not saying not say all men, but most men, most men like sports. And so, for example, you know, my husband likes, um, he likes the Cleveland Browns. Even though they're sorry, is all get out, but he likes the Cleveland Browns. So something, you know, ladies, if you know your husband has a favorite sports team, you know, won't you think about getting that jersey? Because that's a little nice, ne nice, nasty, sexy. Get that jersey. And maybe he, if he has a flavor, favorite player and you know that you research and, and get the number, get get that jersey with that number on there with that the, his favorite teammate or f and favorite uh, player. Put that jersey on with nothing underneath. I would even say go as far as getting the helmet of that team. And then, you know, when he gets home from work or later on when you say, oh, you're going to get ready for bed, then you put it on. And that will turn him on. Because that says you are first to say that you appreciate him and you listen to him and you know what he likes and you know what he likes. 
And so that that's how you get, you know, that's how you get 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 us women to, you know, think a little naughtier. Or, you know, maybe not just women but men. How about you if you like if you see your wife watching a program, say say a bodybuilding program where the man take off his shirt and he's glistening with oil. You know, maybe one maybe one night you just Say, hey, baby, what you think? Of, you know, I think I need to lose weight or look at my muscles. And you and you come out in the middle of the floor with, you know, either some shorts and, you know, topless or just in your, in your birthday suit all glistened up with oil. That will turn it on. And that will see that you've been paying attention to stuff that she's been watching or saying. Um, and so that will bring you all closer in your relationship. And then... You know, men, act like you like romantic comedies. That will help her to start thinking a little freakier. She likes, you know, most women like chick flicks. So get into one of her chick flicks. You know, you pretend. Fake it till you make it. If you don't like it, just fake it till you make it. The end result is to get her thinking a little bit freaky. So you have a freak in the bedroom. So you have a lady in the street and a freak in the bedroom. And so one of those things, you have to pay attention to what type of stuff she like. And if it's a chick flick, a romantic comedy, you know, get to get into it. If you know there's a as a as a certain movie that she like, and you know it's coming over, excuse me. Hey, bring it up and say, hey, babe. Um, like for example, my husband knows I love coming to America. Now that movie came out when I was in middle school. However, I, that's one of my favorite movies. So, it's on, like, it comes on, like, every three months. They'll show it on one of the cable channels. And so, he'll say, you know, I know a few months ago, he actually taped it for me. And one weekend, um, he was like, oh, baby, come on, I, come on let's watch. I, I taped the movies for us to watch. And I had um, gotten us some wings, and we was chilling. And and so, we sat next to each other. He said, and the kids think the kids were by my parents house and he said oh let's watch a you know let's watch a movie and so I, I didn't even ask i said okay so we sat there and it was my favorite movie and i felt i mean i felt appreciated felt like okay he paid attention to me he knows what i like and that turned me on so if you want your your wife to be turned on by simple things pay attention to <clears throat> pay attention and then if if you're watching a certain movie or watching a certain TV show, and you get and you tell by your your spouse um, reaction that she likes it, she likes what she sees, she likes the scene, um, then recreate that scene, and that will get her, that will drive her wild. I'll get her to want to be nasty with you, want her to be a little bit freaky with you, and I mean freaky, it's a, it's a relative term. I mean, doing doing things outside of your comfort zone as far as your sexual experience with one another. Now, disclaimer, I'm not talking about bringing in a third party. I'm not talking about bringing in a third party. I say it again. I'm not talking about bringing in a third party. No, I'm just talking about experimenting, role playing, and things of that nature. And that will help <clears throat> with your and to make your, your sex life healthier. And then lastly, do a little sex talk. And I mean, you know, say something a little nice, nasty, or if you can't do it, if it's too much all in your face, you can't do it like that, send her a text. And I want you to go back through my channel. And I um, did a video not so long ago, not so long ago, suggesting that couples do a seven-day sexting challenge to drive your your spouse crazy. And so if you do that, <clears throat> that will get her thinking it in a little nastier way. You can get her, you can do it, have her do it, recreate a little thing, and, and, and she can bring your fantasies out, and you ha can have the ultimate sexual experience. So I'm glad I was able to help you 
and give you some tips on how to get your spouse, especially your wife, on thinking a little freakier, getting her thoughts a little dirtier, so you can have that ultimate sexual experience. Because it's all about being happier and healthy marriages. And sex is a ministry. I pray for good fortune in everything that you do and for your good health, that your everyday affairs prospers as well as your soul. Marital bliss. Bye-bye.